Hi, I'm Matt Olean, and I'm standing here at just one of the many fine golf courses in our region. I was raised around golf my whole life by my dad, my older brother. And it's a great sport, maybe the greatest sport of all, because you can play it into your senior years, and people in the upper Midwest love it. What you may not know is in North Dakota, Minnesota, and Manitoba, they all have one of the highest per capita rates of golfers in North America. That means people around here are obsessed with golf. And if you want to play some great affordable public golf courses, there are some tremendous small town golf courses in this region. We'll take you on a tour of some of the best small town public golf courses in the upper Midwest. Come on along, you'll be glad you did. That's a dandy. That was a scary one. Funding for Golfing Gyms, the best small town courses, is provided by the members of Prairie Public. This isn't heaven, but it's pretty darn close. This is the dog leg left, and we want to hit the ball just over the corner of the trees here, carry it out into that fairway inside the 150 yard mark. So let's, let's see what I can do here. You want to miss this one, you want to miss it right just a little bit. Is that too much? Well, I didn't want the draw, but I think I should be in the open area okay. there. Get through. Oh, I got it like that. Good swing. That's going to work. Oh, I think he just caught the trap. Just caught the edge. A little pro check there, too. Very nice shot. Good par, Mike. Hey, that's a working man's par. <laughs> Okay, Mike, uh, like I said, I played here in high school at the regionals, love the course. What, what is it that makes the Laramore Golf Course special? A lot of people talk about this course when they come here. A couple of things in particular. Uh, we have a great staff that takes just great care of this course, both inside and out. And as far as when a player comes here and plays, uh, it's not uncommon for them to literally have in their mind two or three years down the road, uh, a very, very key uh, remembrance of what the layout is of every hole. So there's a lot of, this is a very scenic golf course and I think that's what really attracts people. Is it challenging? Where would you rank it on the challenging scale? I think considering it's, an, it's a 50 year old course uh, and not extremely long, the real challenging is in putting. Uh, you have a lot of break on, on a lot of different putts and if you are a good putter from playing at the Laramore Golf Course, you can putt well anywhere. And this is 50 years now? Tell me about the history of the course a little bit. And this who course, built it and those kind of things. Yeah, this course was built in 1959 and was Sand Greens, and it was a Sand Green course for about four years. Uh, one of the interesting things about this course is that a group of men in town plotted this land and bought this land uh, for a very small amount of money, and it was literally a pasture. And with volunteer labor came out over a three or four year period of time and mowed down all the buck brush moved a fair amount of dirt in some of the low-lying areas and made a sand greens golf course out of this area. So this at one time was a legitimate pasture. Do you get a lot of Grand Forks traffic here and people that come back each year? We certainly do. We have a very solid base of membership out of the Grand Forks area. Probably pretty close to 140 of our members are from the Grand Forks area. Um, so we really appreciate their business and, and we want them to continue to come back. And this is a great value uh, for a membership. Um, it's uh, very inexpensive to play and, um, and we have a very, very wide uh, base of membership. Well, let's play. Okay. Yeah, back in the 80s, Matt, probably most of these trees weren't here. Mike, every course has their signature hole. This is it at Laramore, right? Number four. This tell, would be at number, about it. number four, 267 yard par four, uh, uphill to the green, uh, big oak tree on the left that you want to stay to the right of. So the garden spot is just to the right of the oak tree in the middle of the fairway. 
Uh, the green is probably the toughest putting green we've got on the golf course. I got it. Perfect. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that was a good one. So I got about 69 yards here up the hill. Don't screw this up. Okay, sit down now. Sit down now. A little long, but you're going to be okay. Are we okay? All right. I pulled it a little bit, but I'm going to be okay. Yeah, I think that's enough. Okay. Yep. That's got to go. A little more, a little more, a little more. That's pretty decent. Look at that thing trickle downhill. <laughs> I would guess par is a good score in this hole. Par is so a good score. Take that. Get up. Get up. No, it's on there. Nice. Check. Oh, good chip, Mike. Good chip. Thank you. Good pot, good pot. Birdie. <laughs> oh, Beauty. I like it. That's my best tee shot That's of the, the day. One. Yep, right there. Oh, God, you got to do that once around, don't you? I got to like that, I think. It's pretty good, yep. No, that's not a bad spot to be at. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Very nice. Well, Mike, we both got birdie putts here. Oh, man. That was not a good stroke. Great birdie, Mike. <laughs> you know these greens. <laughs> I think I've uh, played a few rounds here, man. Yep. Par birdie's good. Good swing. Yeah, right felt, into the teeth of the wind. good, yep. Chipping a putt for a 40 here. That'd be all right, as little as I play. Settle, settle, settle. Boy, you're deadly on these greens. That is called local knowledge. Well, Mike, that was a fun round of golf. I, I just, the course is as good as I ever remember. You had a 37, I had a 41, which I'll take that. Um, but you're, you know these greens well. <laughs> it helps to play, a, play as many rounds as I have over 30 years. I, I know the greens pretty well, but this has been really fun, Matt, and uh, we're really pleased with the course that we have. We're blessed to have it. And we're glad that you guys could come out today and enjoy it with us. We appreciate it. Now, how many members again do you have? That's a lot for a small town golf course. We have about 350 members and we pull from quite a wide variety of areas. We have members as far as Grafton and a lot of members out of Grand Forks, which we're really grateful for, to have. Probably about 130 members out of the, just out of the Grand Forks area alone. And I know you mentioned this during our round, but the valley aspect of this gives a lot of scenic views. Those par threes are great. The par four is going up the hill. A little different than flat, flat North Dakota in a lot of spots, isn't it? It certainly is. You would think of a golf course in Red River Valley would be flat everywhere, but we have a lot of terrain up and down and some flat hills and some, some terrain that you have to negotiate. I think it makes you a better golfer and, get, and provides some really some unique challenges for the average golfer. So thanks, Mike, our 2008 club champion right here at Laramore. <laughs> I hope I can do it again. So if you're in that Laramore area or west of Grand Forks, come on and take a round of golf at the Laramore Golf Course. Nice, Don. Eat up. Oh, yeah. Mm. 
Oh, a little long. It's a little too hard. Hit it good. Hit it good, though. Yeah, it's going to be tricky, isn't it? That's, I'll take, I'll take that every day. Whoa, nice ball. What a simple game, huh? Well, we're here at the Sand Hill River Golf Course in Fertile, Minnesota, just kind of northeast of the Fargo-Moorhead area. And we're gonna play this golf course today. Don Blazer is with me. Don is the former superintendent of schools here in Fertile and a longtime member and Don, Beautiful golf course, what makes it special? Oh, I think a uh, couple of things. First of all, the scenery. Uh, you, it's, uh, there's a lot of really picturesque holes. Uh, second thing is uh, most of the course you play, you don't play uh, next to another hole. And, and I guess the third thing is, is you can play it aggressively or you can play it uh, um, taking less chances and you can be successful either way. It depends how well you play. Most of the time you're better off uh, playing a little conservatively and playing a little target golf and trying to advance the ball and staying in the fairway because there's a lot of grass in the rough and it's easier playing out of the fairway. Plus, there, there's a lot of potential problems between trees and river and some out of bounds. It's very busy on weekends. You need a tea time on the weekends. And you can get a tea time anytime, but you really need them on the weekends. And uh, we have about 230 members. Sell about 230 memberships. It's been uh, about 11 years since it was built. I'm really struck too, Don, how green the course is and how, how well you keep this, this course up. And I, I'm sure people really get impressed by that. They're impressed by the grooming of the course. Um, there's a lot of little extra special things that have been done. Uh, um, for example, on this hole, there's some, some flowers next to the tee box. Uh, on uh, number five, there's a, uh, uh, if you look back from the hole, you can see a Roman numeral made out of shrubs. Uh, the tee boxes, uh, uh, you know, are, are built up. A lot of little extra things. And people are really struck by the scenery. Let's play golf, Don. We'll try. Okay. And we've had timely rains this summer. Uh, you know, the fairways and greens and tee boxes and everything are really well watered. Well, Don, every course has their signature hole. This is it. Just a beautiful, beautiful, kind of a scary shot, though, too. Yeah, not a long hole, 327. But trouble. But trouble, uh, out of bounds on the right in the woods and river on the left. So. Do you want to be laying three or do you want to be laying two? Is this the hole everybody kind of talks about? When it they really play this is. Hole? It, it is. It's, this is the hole people come back for or come to see. Mm -hmm. we, you know, we have people who just come and want to drive around the course, and this is where they want to come and look at. Hooking. Get down. Good ball. Absolutely perfect. That was the best one of the day there. Yeah, about 90 For me. yards out. Okay, good chip. Got your got your bogey there. Come on. I think I'll I'll take a par in this hole. Yep. Ah, you know, I spent the whole night doing that last night. No, <laughs> keep my head still, straight back, straight through. That's about all I'm thinking. Oh, I should have thought hit a little harder. I'm going to try watching the ball the whole time. Uh oh. You know, this game is a lot easier if you watch the ball. Good ball. You're in heaven. Okay. Oh my goodness. I almost missed that thing. Wow. 200 ranges. Sorry, Don. It's okay. Oh! <laughs> Maybe I should keep talking. You'll make yeah. putts. Yeah. 
Talk talking right, right in his backswing and he made it. It's a better swing. Get up there. Get up. Oh! That's better. Yeah, good swing. Good swing there. Yes! This is the easy one. This is the straightforward uh, par four. You mm -hmm. get up and wail away. And, and Don said this was the easy hole. <laughs> Making a mess of this. Oh. Nice. Yeah, oh. there's our birdie for today. This is a routine birdie. That's a good swing. A little right, but he hit it good. No. I forgot about that not looking up thing again. Now, oh, fanned it out to the right. Ooh boy, uh -oh. look at that. <laughs> Would have been a nice way to end it. Thanks, thank Kevin. You. Enjoyed it. Yes, it was Don, thank you. Appreciate it. No problem. Well, Don, we had some good shots and we had some bad shots. Uh, first time out here, if you haven't played this course, it's going to test you, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, be conservative. Uh -huh. You know, and, that uh, out hard, yeah, the hard way. Yeah, yeah, we all did. We all did. I used to uh, wail away too, but after going to the river in the trees a few times, you think about uh, just staying in the short grass. But it's scenic, it's beautiful, and uh, it was a wonderful round of golf. And again, uh, easy drive for a lot of people in that Grand Forks, Fargo, Fergus yep. Falls, Crookston area, right? Yeah. Tell people again how to get here. You bet. Just get on Highway 32, and it's just uh, on the south edge of Pirtle. Fertile Minnesota, Sand Hill River Golf Course, one of the best ones around. Starting hole number one is a very easy, particularly easy starting hole, it's 300 yards, but it gets people off the ground and going. Very nice. Should be all right, right? Good ball. Thanks. Yes! <laughs> Way to go. Very nice. Oh, get in, get in. Oh, oh. nice putt, nice putt. Well, now we're here at Minnewasta Country Club in Morden, Manitoba, a little bit southwest of Winnipeg, and uh, Bruce Owen is with me. Bruce, you work in the pro shop, and uh, yes, you're going to play with us today. And boy, what a hidden gem this is. you got an 18-hole course in a small town, and it feels like you're at a Winnipeg or Fargo Country Club or Twin Cities Country Club. Tell us about this course, what makes it special? Okay, what's special is about this course, it's an 18-hole course laid out in a very scenic valley with the Dead Horse Creek running through the middle of it. And it has beautiful features because we're on the edge of the Pemina Escarpment. And it's 18 holes, very challenging. Um, the greens are the most challenging you'll find. Very fast, in, I've heard. Very fast, probably the fastest in Manitoba. We've had comments made from people from Western Canada saying they're the best greens they've ever played in Western Canada. Uh, we have a membership base of about 340 members and it's very well supported by the town and the community in the local area. In fact, we do enjoy having many visitors coming up from the United States, Langdon, Grand Forks, even Fargo at times, they do come and visit us because it is one of the better rated courses in Manitoba. It's in the top three of Manitoba. Being that it's based in a small town like us, it's we're population a little over 6,400 people, that we're very fortunate to have this, like you say, gem of a golf course. And how did it get built? How did a town this small support this golf course? Tell me the history of it. Yeah, the history is it began as a nine-hole course in the lower portion of the um, 
the valley, I guess you would call it. And in the late 1960s, they decided to expand to an 18-hole course, and we got a world-renowned golf architect, Les Ferber, to come out here and redesign the course into an 18-hole layout. Um, Les, when he came out here, he was just drooling because of the features available for the golf course design and the setup. Okay, let's play. Okay, let's go. Probably not going to hurt you, is it? No, that no. would be all right, I think. Okay. Okay. There so far. we go. Thanks. We'll go to six. And it, again, it's another challenging narrow shoot. And if your tee shot's a little errant to the left, you're down into a little valley that's about 100 feet below the hole that you've got to chip up to the hole on. That about right? That should be just where okay. I'd like it. Oh, caught it fat. Bunker. Yeah. Great ball. Great ball. Get up Get there. Up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Yes, great yeah, shot. Right on You're on the green. Super. Just a hair short. Ooh, very speedy. Then we'll move over to our feature hole, which is number eight. Uh -huh. And it is, again, another downhill, 200-yard uh, hole downhill to the green. But from that hole, you can see our picturesque country club, restaurant, banquet facility, and the pro shop from the top of the hill. And it's, you can see most of the valley holes in the course. Nice one, Abe. Oh, wow. I pulled that something terrible. Woo! That might be it. Yes, sir. Great shot, Matt. If it wasn't the speedy greens, you'd be right there. Great shot. Good shot from there. Thank you. Stay there. Stay there. That's a good shot. That's a good one. Very demanding putting wow. on these greens. I don't think I got to hit that much softer. Nice one, Matt. It's there. Yes, sir. Nice par. That is a great two-putt par. <laughs> that was a tough two-putt. Oh, Bruce. E. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hit it, hit it. Get in. <sighs> oh. Give it Good a chance. Try. These are really great greens, Bruce, I must yep. say. As I commented, I think we have yep. the best greens in Western yeah, Canada. Very good. Get going. Oh, no, I didn't hit just it. I left lack it of short. speed. Lack of speed. Yeah. There's the shot. Great ball, Matt. Thanks. Oh, it looks good. It looks good. Oh, <laughs> yes, couldn't hold the line. Yes. Hold it. Oh, hold it. dear. Oh, well, we got our pars here. Well, Bruce, thanks for an enjoyable round of golf, and boy, these greens are fabulous. That's what people talk about, right? Well, I'm really pleased that you're enjoying them, and I think you found that they're quite challenging. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just about snuck a few birdies, but maybe next time. Yeah, 
and you, you don't want to get on the wrong side of these pins, right? Or you can you can putt balls off the green a la Augusta. I, I, absolutely. The, many of the pins, if they're set up on the edges and you're up on the wrong side, you will putt off the greens. But it's a weight thing. There are, they give you a chance. If you have the white right, weight and the white right line, you will get them in the hole. And a lot of these par fours are position par fours. You don't want to get aggressive with the driver. Really, you don't, no. Because if you try to get aggressive, you're just putting yourself into more hazards than you probably would want to be. So if you can position yourself properly, you have a good chance to get on the green, get your birds. You told me an interesting story of how you ended up in Morden and why. Yes, I uh, 10 years ago, I had an opportunity to take a job that either took me to Portage La Prairie or Morden. I decided to retire and come to Morden for the golf course. And someone else told me that that day, yeah. today as well. So that's a good, that's a good endorsement. Yeah. So the Minnewasta Golf and Country Club, uh, southwest of Winnipeg, if you're coming over the border from Pembina, drive about 15 miles, take, go west on Highway 14, and you're right there. It's a great, great round of golf. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, Matt. And that is trouble. Well, I pulled it. It's a good ball, Matt. Yeah, I gotta hit it further than that. It's a good putt. <laughs> That's a beautiful putt. <laughs> nice putt, Matt. <laughs> That was my one for the day right there. Oh well, boy. Hey, how about that, man? Nothing to this, huh? Yeah. Be nice to do that on every hole. Well, we're here at the Painted Woods Golf Course, just south of Washburn, and, and Nathan Grubb is with me. Nathan, you're the vice president of the board here at the golf course and local undertaker. And uh, when I started researching this program, everybody told me I had to do Washburn. I played this course a couple times. What is it about Painted Woods that makes it so special and keeps bringing people back? Painted Woods is a very scenic golf course. Uh, it's a challenging nine hole golf course. Uh, it's known statewide. Water comes into play on every hole. Uh, so it's a special course. Uh, it's located right along Highway 83 between Bismarck and Minot. Gets a lot of traffic and is consistently in good shape every year. How many members do you got here? Roughly our membership is about 150 to 175 yearly. Uh, that includes family memberships, individual memberships. We do get a lot of Bismarck traffic. A lot of, a lot of members from Bismarck come up and play. Um, so we're satisfied uh, with the uh, membership base right now. And what you say, it's kind of word of mouth, too. Do you feel word of mouth has helped this course throughout the state? People have heard about it. You get people from all over the place, don't you? Absolutely. A lot of green fees. A lot of green fees. People from, um, you know, tri-state region, Canadians coming down, uh, like to play this course. When was the course designed? How long has it been up and operational? We are celebrating our 30th year this year. Uh, the course came in 1979. Uh, we've made improvements just about every year since then. Uh, right now we're looking uh, at actually putting in a back nine to Painted Woods. We're in the process of a market analysis. Uh, once we get the results back from that market analysis, uh, we'll then see if we can uh, uh, go ahead with an additional line. All right, let's play. All right, sounds good. This is a 460 yard par five, half the distance is uphill. Mm -hmm. Can be a very tricky hole if you're playing into the wind. Okay. A long par five. We got a little wind in our face today. A little wind in our face again today. You've got plenty of room to your left. Okay. Good one, Nathan. Wow, oh, what am I doing here? Wow. No clue. Sounded good. Eagle chip for Nathan. Oh, that's going to have to whoa, sit down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You got to putt at it anyway. That, I'll tell you what, that's... Oh, it still went by. I yeah, barely hit that. The, yeah, that's a good that, chip I couldn't have hit it any softer. Okay, good par. Thank you. 
Back-to-back -back par fives. This one plays a little shorter at 425. It's downhill. Once again, you have water to your right. A lot of room to your left. Uh, on your second shot, third shot, you got the creek that runs a little bit in front of the right side of the green that you need to be concerned about. That's better. There you go. Good up. Good up. Whoa, and that's not what I wanted to do. Come on, come on. And when you're going uphill, you got to hit it harder. On those shots, Nathan, what I do, if you can keep it on the ground, a six or seven is probably the way, to, the way I go. Yep. No, that's a good call. Get up there. Get up. I don't know why I didn't hit that. It's uphill. You might as well hit it. It. Okay. It's a real nice up, Matt. Good ball. Beauty. Beauty. Ah, looked up. Oh, yeah. That's as good as I can hit it there. Good one, Nathan. Sit. Well, I went a little left, but that should be That's safe. That's not going to hurt you. Oh, story of my day. Great finish for us. Yeah. <laughs> but it was fun. Yes, it was. Thanks. Good round. Thank you, Matt. We've got a lot of bogeys today. We haven't, we've had some good holes, some not so good holes. It seems like you need to have some local knowledge here to maybe shoot in the 30s to post a pretty good score. Yeah, you do. Uh, I've been playing Painted Woods now for 11 years, uh, ever since I moved to Washburn. And yeah, there's, dif there's different holes where you need to pick your spots um, in order to birdie or par the hole. But um, like I say, just, it's just a fun course for, for anybody that's rolling through the area. Uh, it typically takes an hour to hour and a half mm -hmm. to play depending on traffic, and uh, I would encourage anyone to come play Painted Woods. What does it do, too, for that quality of life in a small town? Can you talk about that, just that extra quality of life factor you've got here? Absolutely. The Northern Plains, you know, in North Dakota, um, to me, this is a release coming out to Painted Woods. You know, it's, it's a beautiful atmosphere. Uh, with a beautiful deck and patio, and uh, it's the highlight of my summer. And again, tell us, tell people, very easy access from Bismarck or Minot on Highway 83. Tell them where it is. Right, we're approximately 30, 32 miles north of Bismarck, Highway 83, about 75 miles south of Minot. Easy access, we're one quarter mile right off of Highway 83. Okay, great. Thanks, Nathan. It was a fun round of golf. Thank you, Matt. Starts off with number one, the pretty easy par four, no trouble, kind of gets your feet wet. A little fairway, can't complain about that. Beauty. No. Came off it. Shot. Yeah, Matt. Ooh. Well, we're here at the Pheasant Country Golf Course in South Hart, North Dakota, near Dickinson. An unusual course because it's 18 holes and it has a head professional. Very unusual for a small town. Kirby Robb is with me, the head professional here at Pheasant Country. Yeah, we're kind of in a good location because we draw members from Dickinson, South Hart, Belfield, 
uh, New England area. We actually have some members come over from Weibo, which is 60 miles away, and Beach, which is 50. Um, Dickinson only has one course, so it kind of helps out both places to have another place to play with. There's a tournament in town. We, uh, we try to run the friendliest atmosphere we can, which brings a lot of members out here because they like the way we um, kind of have the laid back attitude of family atmosphere. You're not rushed onto the course and, and we take pride in that. Uh, people love our customer service. It's something we're very proud of. We uh, host many uh, high school tournaments because we are an 18-0 facility. We hold a lot of the regional tournaments in the springs for the girls or the boys. Some of the remarks for people that played it is that you got a great course. What a great course, and we'll definitely be back. And we're just trying to get our name out there. It is only 12 years old. So we do have a website now called FezzyCountryGolf.com, which people can look up when they're traveling west. We're part of the Southwest Golf Package, which includes Dickinson, Kildare, Southart, and Medora, which is very popular, where we get many people from outside the nation, let alone outside the state, come and play. And uh, they have a great time. Um, some people are here from Canada last week and said they're definitely coming back again so they definitely good good reports from people come off the course well let's go play okay are the greens still kind of coming back from last year you're kind of building them back up to where you need to, to have them yeah they're uh they've come back a long ways from last year to be honest with you and uh they're they're getting close to being back to normal There you go, good one. Hole nine is a long par five. It's a risk reward shot once again. If you get your driver straight down the fairway, you have about 150 to 170 into it, but you get a little left or right of the fairway, you're in the trees and you're ending up punching out. So it is our fourth hardest hole. Hey, there you go, birdie. Good job. Thanks. Well, Matt, here at Pheasant Country is our hole number 10. It's uh, probably the one of the most talked about holes on the course. It's a 450 par four, and your tee shot selection is very crucial. We have a big wind at our back today, so driver is definitely not an option. You really want to probably hit a long iron or a hybrid and just keep her in the fairway, and a four here is a good score. That'll play, Matt. Good ball. Come on. Come oh. on. Be right. Yeah, Matt. Get up there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Shot. It's a tough shot from down there. Come on, keep climbing. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> that was lucky. There's a shot of the day there. <laughs> And I did. <laughs> I left her short. And the prettiest hole we probably have on the golf course is 18. It's our signature hole. It's a long, skinny, snaky green, and it really slopes left to right. So a good tee shot is appropriate out to the right, and it's kind of a hard uh, green to get close to with, a, with your second shot. Goodbye. Wasn't that bad of a shot.
Kirby, thanks for a fun round of golf. Appreciate it. And uh, these greens, I'll tell you what, you, you made a good point. If they were, they're not terribly fast, but if they were fast, some of these greens would almost be unplayable because of the sloping, right? Yeah, as you've seen in 18, uh, the ball kind of rolled off the green in our chip shots there. And uh, between 8 and 18, if they were faster, if you, we'd have trouble finding places to put the pin, and they'd have to probably rework the greens to make them faster. So that's one of the reasons they are a little bit slower out here. Well, it's a great challenge, uh, Pheasant Country Golf Course, just west of Dickinson, a great 18-hole challenge with a small-town atmosphere. Thanks, yes, Kirby. Sir. You betcha. Thanks, guys, for coming. We appreciate you coming out. You bet. Oh, that'll play real nice. Boy, Jerry, I can't believe these fairways. These are some of the best fairways I've seen in the state. We're fortunate to have some real good soil conditions in our fairways here. Wow. Oh. Yeah, there's a nice kick. Nice shot. Thanks. Hit the hole. Well, we're here at the Medicine Hole Golf Course, uh, just north of Kildare, North Dakota, and I'm with Golf Course Superintendent Jerry Storjohn. And Jerry, when you look out at this layout, very new layout, you just think, wow, this is going to be an interesting round of golf. Tell us about the course and when it was designed. Um, well, the course opened in 2004, and uh, it's very much an amphitheater effect. Uh, you know, we're, we're real bowl shaped here. Um, we're we're kind of like a mini hawk tree. Anyone that's ever golfed the hawk tree golf course, uh, Jim Ng was the designer of our course and the hawk tree golf course. So, uh, real similar in, in uh, appearance wise. and. Plenty of elevation change, you know. Uh, this golf course has a lot of elevation change, so you know you're having many different shots from different tee boxes, and, and so it's it's a real fun round of golf. Can you tell us about how the work that goes into actually building a golf course from ground from ground level? It's a lot of work, isn't it? Oh, you bet, you bet. And uh, you know, one good thing if you can use a lot of the existing landscape right. and and uh, where you can look out around this golf course and see that. You know, we move some some dirt around here, but uh, you know, uh, it, it's good to try to come in and use the existing uh, landscape. It's it's much easier to design a golf course that way and, and and build a golf course that way. What's been the reaction of the public to this course in the five years it's been open? Real good, positive. Um, our native grass, you know, it, it, it's a challenge. You know, we have some tight fairways. As we get out on the golf course, you'll see that uh, you know we've got a challenge in golf course here. And uh, with, with different tee boxes, you know, you can play the front tees, you can play the back tees, so you're using different clubs, you know. I mean, you go out and play nine holes and go play another nine holes from a different set of tees, you're, you're using completely different golf clubs, so uh, it's a real challenge, you yep. know. Okay, let's play. Sounds great. All right. This is a real good hole. You can either be daring and, and cut right across the water here and uh, put it on the green or, you know, a little more conservative conservative shot would be in the fairway here. Excellent. Well, like Jerry said, number two here at Medicine Hole, you don't want to get aggressive. Just lay it up here and hopefully hit a little wedge in here. And There's no sense going for this green unless uh, you're a big hitter. Looked up. I hope those clouds hold off. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to bat the hands on this one. Yeah, if we can get this round in. Good leg. Jerry, this isn't the British Open, it's Killdeer, but uh, our, my first try out of the, the native grass here, so we'll see what we can do with this lie. <sighs> 
when you're in the native grass is to just punch on, it out into the fairway. You know, I mean, a lot of guys try to hit the long shot out of the native grass. And after doing that a couple of times, you, you just figure out you can be hitting a couple extra shots to get out if you do that. As you can see, this is what the native grass will do to your ball here at Medicine Hole. I've driven it into the native grass here on number eight. And uh, I'm gonna do well just to even get that, this back to the fairway. There's no way I can reach the green out of this rough. So it's a, it's a, whole, it's a course that looks simple, but it's not if you go in the native grass. So let's see what I can do with this. Uh, Jerry, boy, picturesque par three. You don't wanna get too aggressive here. Yeah, hole number, hole number five. Yeah. Uh, nice little short par three, 145 yards. Uh, great hole. This is a fun hole. You know, you have the water there on the left right. side of you to, to, you know, kind of challenge you a little bit to, so you don't get too, too chancy. Hey, get up just a little bit. Come on. Come on. Oh, yeah. Beauty. Get up. Go on. Good get up there. Come on. Nice stop, chip. Stop. Nice stop. chip. Birdie. Sweet. Thank you very much. You know, for a five-year-old course, this is a great looking course. And in, I can imagine five or 10 years what it's gonna look like. And you're gonna have some some land sales here that are gonna help a little bit, water sales? Um, yeah, actually, uh, we have been permitted by the state of North Dakota for 75 acre feet of water that we can sell. Okay. And uh, that's gonna you know, get the golf course in the area of uh, right around 200,000 to 250,000 in, in water sales a year, which uh, you'll see some, some real real grand improvements of this golf course in the next couple of years with, with some funds to, to do some projects that we wanna do. I think having you out here today and, and giving us the exposure that we're gonna get here is, is gonna help us get some people from the other side of the state seeing what we have to offer. Tell people where to find the golf course if you're driving just north of Kildare. Yeah, the golf course is just north of Kildare, about a mile and a quarter out of town. Highway um, 22. Highway 22, and uh, there's signs uh, directing you to the golf course. It's the first right turn, and uh, we're right up the hill. Uh, you can see the golf course when you're coming out of town. Well, our tour continues. We're now at the Oaks Country Club in Oaks, North Dakota, my hometown where I grew up. And uh, our guide today is my brother. And uh, we've lost track of how many club titles you've won here in Oaks. Is it 20 something? 27, 28, something yeah. like that. So I'm not sure if it's anything anybody else would aspire to anyway, but. <laughs> but you won the club title here a lot of times. You're the premier player around here. And Reed is also a three-time state champion and member of the North Dakota Golf Hall of Fame. So congratulations on that. And Reed, you've played this course a lot of times, you know every nook and cranny. What is it that makes it special? What do people kind of talk about? I know the greens are something people that like a lot here. Well, I think that's the main part of it, and uh, it's not a long golf course, so virtually anybody can play it. Uh, but I, I would say the biggest thing about your shot into the green is your distance control, because uh, almost all the trouble on this golf course is behind the greens, either by out of bounds or even if you're not out of bounds on several holes, the greens are sloped from back to front. So if you're behind the green, uh, with the speed of the greens, you're gonna have a very difficult chip shot to get it anywhere near the hole. Now, when we were kids, these trees were much smaller. A lot of them weren't here. The course has gotten tighter and more difficult because of the trees. Can you talk about that? It's made the course a little harder. Yeah, it has. They're, they're, they're much bigger. It used, to, it used to be you could hit the ball pretty much any place in the rough and still have a shot. And to some degree, that's still true. Uh, but there, there's, a, there's a lot of holes where you can get into a lot more trouble. Now, what's interesting too about growing up around here is a, 
quite a large number of really outstanding players have come out of this town for a town of 2,000 people. Not only yourself, but uh, your friend Craig Bali and of course Mike Podolak who needs no introduction. He's always wanted to get better and still does. And uh, for he's, he's played in something like 37 USGA events. Uh, he was the 1984 United States Mid-Amateur Champion. Okay, let's play. All right. I forgot to mention we're uh, playing with our dad today. It's always a thrill to, for us to play with him, so uh, it's going to be a fun round. Reed, this is your favorite hole in the course? Why? This is my favorite hole in the course. Uh, it's the hardest hole in the course, in my opinion. Uh, it's only about 350 yards long, but it's uh, one of those holes that doesn't have to be long to be a difficult hole. It's pretty much a straight or right away hole, but it's got a uh, water hazard on the left. And uh, the second shot is the key. The, the green is, is uh, sloped a lot from back to front, and there is all kinds of trouble if you miss the green, right, left, or behind the green. So the fun's just beginning. Too far to the right. That's coming. Come on. It's not that bad of a shot, Matt. I'm just going to drop this ball without any impetus forward. I want you to watch how far this ball rolls. almost off the green. That's with no help from me, just dropping it straight down and letting gravity take over. That's why you don't want to be behind this green. Now this putt is only about 15 or 16 feet, but I'm going to have to play probably between three and a half and four feet of break on this putt. Good one, good putt. And that's how you play this hole, right? That's about yeah. how you should play this hole. I don't always play this <laughs> hole this way, but uh, yeah, this is how you play the hole. This is probably my second favorite hole out here. A hole somewhat like number two with a lot of change in elevation and a green that has a lot of slope from back to front. Oh, you dropped into the, into the fairway, Randy. God, not that. It's all right, man. Get up. And once again, there's a very tight OB behind the green, so club selection on your second shot is vital. Uh, and if you miss the green long or to the right, the fun's just beginning then too. So we'll see how this goes. As you can see, this green is sloped uh, severely from, from west to east. There's probably three feet of difference between the bottom of this bottom of the screen and the top. Matt's putt here is about 20 feet and he's gonna have to play probably three and a half to four feet of break to get this ball close to the hole. If the wind's blowing out of the north and you're playing into the wind, it, it's, it's a little bit harder. This is playing downwind today about 140. Uh, really, you just got to make sure you take the right club and, and as is the character of most of these holes, don't go long. You're better to miss the green short if you're going to miss it. Good shot, Randy. Good shot. Oh, yeah. And got my over. gamble paid off. I made it. Well, I've driven my ball so far right that I'm actually going to play up this way. Um, rather than try to get it back in the fairway. It's all right, Matt. <sighs> Not my best, but... That looks really this good. Be a good one. Looks really good, yep. There. That's a great there birdie from where you drove it, Reed. Good job. There you go, Dad. Good shot, Dad. Good shot, Dad. Beauty. Hey, hey birdie. Good birdie, Dad. <laughs> good job. Get in. Far save. Good drive, Randy. Yep. Be close. That might be maybe a little short, but it should be right short around left. the green. 
Well, we've reached the final hole, and uh, thanks for a great round of golf, Reed. You're playing you, your usual round, one under through eight, and uh, thanks for leading us around. And the par three ninth, kind of a special hole for both of us. Yeah, I've made two hole in ones in my life, and one of them has been on this hole, but I don't think that's the reason I remember this hole the most, because I remember watching you make your hole in one <laughs> on this hole. Uh, a total it a, shock, it, it was. It was a great looking shot right off the tee, and uh, it looked like it was gonna be one of those special shots, and it went in. Well, I don't know if we're gonna do that this time, but uh, thanks for leading us around, and uh, I would tell people if you're in southeast North Dakota, about 55 miles south of Valley City on Highway 1, stop in at the Oaks Country Club anytime. Thanks, Reed. We'd love to have you. Thanks, Randy. Yeah, thank it's fun. You. you bet. Thanks for coming, yeah, man. You bet. Well, that concludes our tour of the best small town golf courses in our region. There are many other fine courses we did not have time to profile, but remember, your next great golfing adventure might be just down the road. Funding for Golfing Gyms, the Best Small Town Courses, is provided by the members of Prairie Public. To purchase more DVD copies of Golfing Gyms, the Best Small Town Courses for $29.95, or to buy other DVDs in Prairie Public's library, call 1-800-359-6900 or visit our website at www.prairiepublic.org.